Hello everyone, welcome to another music review here on Music of the Mountains, Jindo Dog Journeys. Today we're going to discuss the new Iron Maiden album, Sinjutsu. It's their 17th studio album, released September 3rd, 2021, recorded back in the spring of 2019 during a break in their Legacy of the Beast tour, recorded in France, I believe Paris, France. Uh, the band finished up back in spring of 2019, and because of the COVID-19 pandemic, it hasn't been able, apparently, to be released until this year. Uh, the group still consisting of those Longtime members of Bruce Dickinson, Steve Harris, Adrian Smith, Dave Murray, Yannick Gers, and Nico McBrain. Uh, the album is uh, again produced by Kevin Shirley. This is now what their sixth in the uh, Return of Bruce era, or as I like to say, the Return of Bruce and Adrian era. Um, Roba, <laughs> if you will. Um, so Let's discuss the track listing and I'll let you know what my overall impressions are of it. I have this CD version of it that has the kind of 3D uh, front cover, uh, back cover, which actually would work as another alternative front cover. Pretty outstanding artwork, I think. Two discs and some of the inside artwork. So, uh, we have Iron Maiden releasing another double album, uh, very long album, a uh, little shorter than 2015's Book of Souls, but kind of in the same ballpark. So, let's look at the tracks that are on this album. It kicks off with the title track, Sinjutsu. Uh, I gotta say, one of my favorite things about this song is Nico McBrain's drumming. It starts off the song, therefore the whole album, with this tribal, powerful tribal uh, drumming. Uh, the guitars are fierce, and I think Bruce Dickinson sounds really good on this song, as he does uh, throughout the whole album. Uh, this song one of the things that sticks out for me about this is that it has a very highly memorable chorus. Uh, it's a great hook with the chorus. I like the guitar solos in this song. One of the guitar solos I think has a uh, kind of a wetter sounding chorus-like effect on it, which I thought was really nice. And the last guitar solo, and I don't know who did that, but it has a, a very snarly slide down the neck and into the solo on that. Uh, those next slides are something I've heard on a couple of solos uh, throughout the album, which I think is uh, really cool. Uh, this song, you know, this Iron Maiden gets oh, criticized for this a lot about songs being too long, that they should be edited down. Uh, generally, I don't have a problem with that uh, anywhere on this album, except maybe this song. This is one I think that if they, uh, trimmed maybe a couple minutes off of it, it would have been a little more impactful, in my opinion, but still pretty good. Next, we have the song Stratego. Uh, this is a song that really sounds to me uh, like uh, something off of an album of theirs maybe in the 1980s. This has that very straightforward, uh, in-your-face gallop to it, very punchy, a more compact song, uh, an excellent Yannick solo. I know some people don't care much for his style and that he's a little more uninhibited and just instinctual in his guitar soloing, but I think the solo that he does on this song is really good. I also like this great uh, part that they have after the solo on the song, uh, a strong track overall. Uh, the third track on the album is, of course, The Writing on the Wall, which is the first single that they released from the album back in July. Um, this is a, a favorite song for me on the album. I think that this uh, song as a single was a bit of a curveball for them compared to other singles that they've released in the Roba era. Um, and in fact, for me, I think 
this would probably be right now my second favorite single uh, of theirs in the Roba era. Maybe slightly behind The Wicker Man, um, but closing in on that one pretty fast. I really like this. Uh, I heard people say it's got this Southern rock vibe to it. I don't hear that so much. I hear this folksy, um, amped up outlaw, uh, desert, wild west vibe to it. Uh, but it's got a lot of muscle. Adrian Smith's guitar solos are absolutely smoking hot on this. And the lyrics are very engaging. Um, an excellent song uh, from start to finish. After that, we get into Lost in a Lost World. And this might be my favorite song on the album. It, if it's not a favorite, it's, well, it's in the top three for sure. Um, uh, it was I was immediately pulled in and captivated by how it opens with this uh, kind of early 70s psychedelic uh, uh, intro with Bruce's singing and the uh, strumming guitar, the keyboards, very atmospheric, um, you know, Moody Blues, Pink Floyd, um, Vander Graaff Generator maybe, very, uh, very reminiscent of some of those kind of bands. Uh, it, the, the track is over nine minutes long and it's a, one of Steve Harris's uh, kind of solo pen songs for the album. He's got four of them, and this is the first one of the four. Uh, but the nine minutes here just flies by for me. Um, and I really am impressed with uh, how Bruce sings the, at the end of the, the song as well. Uh, after that, we have Days of Future Past. I like this song a lot. This is a very uh, compact song. It's got a lot of punch to it. The shortest song on the album, around four minutes and uh, I think this song has uh, a lot of feel from uh, that's similar to some of what uh, Bruce Dickinson released on his solo albums in the late 90s like uh, Accident of Birth, Chemical Wedding, that's how it sounded to me and that's what it made me think of. Um, after that we have The Time Machine and the question um, that I have is, you know, is this a, a song that's inspired by the book by H.G. Wells? Um, it seems like it could be, uh, at least partially, um, based on the lyrical subject matter, although um, uh, perhaps not as well. Um, regardless of what the inspiration is behind the track, uh, it's a darn good track, and it's another one of my favorites. Um, I think there's some um, real strong moments, instrumental moments in the middle of the song uh, that's very head bobbing and fist pumping and uh, just a lot of adrenaline there. And I also find that the chorus is uh, a, a very melodic, very memorable chorus uh, in, in this song as well. And so if you have the CD uh, version of the album, this completes the first disc. And so we get into the second uh, disc now. It opens with the song Darkest Hour, which the band have said is a uh, song kind of about Winston Churchill. And I really like the mood of this song. It starts off with uh, these waves and crashing and seagulls, very different for Iron Maiden. Uh, and then I like the arpeggiated chorus or arpeggiated verse parts of the song too. It almost reminds me of, of like old eighties Queensryche um, in that regard. Uh, some strong lyrics and this is just a, a guitar solo extravaganza uh, between Adrian Smith and Dave Murray. Exceptional soloing in, in this song, just love it. Um, after that, we get into the first of the uh, final three Steve Harris epics, which is Death of the Celts. And I've heard, you know, Iron Maiden fans and people say, well, this is like The Klansman Part Two. Of course, The Klansman was a song on their Virtual Eleven album from 1998 when Blaze Bailey was the singer. And maybe, yeah, lyrically, in terms of uh, from a subject matter standpoint, maybe it is like a spiritual cousin of that song, but it's so much better, in my opinion, than. 
uh, the Klansmen. Um, I, I really like the kind of Celtic folk melodies that they amp up uh, throughout this song. I like Bruce's uh, kind of older weathered vocals in this. I think it adds to the overall narration of the song and the storytelling of the song. And uh, it, it does have uh, a lot of kind of a cinematic feel to it. Uh, really enjoyable. After that, we have The Parchment, which is the longest track on the album, over 12 minutes. Um, has a very Arabic kind of sound to it uh, throughout most of, of the body of the song. Um, some um, excellent solos and guitar playing by the three guitarists. Uh, I thought this song actually reminded me a little bit of To Tame a Land off of their Peace of Mind album. Um, another song that has a very strong cinematic feel to it. Uh, you think like maybe you're out wandering through Arabia somewhere and uh, um, you're drawn into this story about kings and, and drama between uh, Arabian groups of, of people. Or, uh, just uh, a very good story in it. Although the lyrics are not like extremely linear, um, they are open, of course, to interpretation throughout all of the, the or most all of the subject matter on, on Sinjutsu, which is kind of consistent with a lot of the Iron Maiden songs in this modern era anyway. They're multi-purpose lyrics, but they can be uh, uh, traced back to certain uh, P certain times or events in history and literature that uh, inspired them. So after the parchment, the album closes on uh, another one of my favorites, Hell on Earth. And I just think this is uh, an excellent closer. It's a uh, maybe the most emotionally powerful song on the album, to my ears, anyway. I uh, really like it. It's kind of a bittersweet song. I really like the uh, dynamics in the song instrumentally. Uh, it can pick up and be very driving and more intense and then it kind of settles down and there's some really nice volume swells at one part in, in the one of the more mellower parts of this song that I really like. I just think it's an excellent closer and an excellent song overall. Is it going to be the last recorded song Aaron, Iron Maiden ever does? I don't know. I hope not. But if so, it is a a great song to go out on, so to speak. So overall, I like Sinjutsu. I don't have any issues with the production or how Bruce sounds on it. It sounds like a, a modern Iron Maiden album. I wouldn't be opposed if they wanted to go back and try writing shorter, more compactful songs for a full album again. If they do another album, I think that would be great too. But I'm a I'm an Iron Maiden fan. I have been since I was... Uh, uh, young teenager, you know, um, what they do, I'm on board with. It's not to say I don't have any criticisms of them, um, cause I do. And, uh, I can point out that in different, uh, albums in their catalog, but this is a pretty solid album. I don't find that there's very, very many valleys on this album. By that, I mean, uh, there aren't a lot of lows. There aren't a lot of songs that um, I really say, wow, that's the dud of the album, or this one, this one, this one. These are the, the ones where the album tanks because these are the worst songs. I think it's pretty pretty steady uh, all the way through. Um, and that is something that I did not find to be the case with Book of Souls or The Final Frontier. I like both of those albums quite a bit. Uh, and a matter of life of death, for that matter. Um, I would say that the last three Iron Maiden albums, I could pick out a lot of lower points on it. Not so much with this. Everything's pretty steady. Where it will rank in my final rankings, at least in the Roba era, I don't know yet. I'm still giving it some time, but I really like it. And I'm really glad that we did get another new Iron Maiden album here in 2021. Uh, looking forward, hoping maybe uh, seeing him on tour in the future, and maybe we'll get lucky and have another Iron Maiden studio album before they're completely ready to hang it up. Take care, everyone. We'll see you again.